Landing late this week and just in time for the weekend is an update to the Wahoo Kicker 6 and Wahoo Kicker Move Smart Trainers that allows them to take advantage of virtual shifting within Zwift. Owners of the Wahoo Kicker 4 and 5 will have to hold out just a little bit longer. Okay, so here's what you'll need for today's update. A Wahoo Kicker 6 or a Wahoo Kicker Move with the latest firmware installed. Zwift Game Client version 1.59, that started rolling out yesterday, so if your system is updated, that's what you'll have. You'll need either the Zwift Play Controllers and or, and I say and or, the Click, because you can use both of these at the same time. You'll need to have everything paired over Bluetooth or Direct Connect to support this virtual shifting. And using the Zwift Cog with its single 14 tooth sprocket is optional. You can use a standard cassette for virtual shifting. In addition to this update comes race mode over Bluetooth to Zwift, meaning you'll get 10 hertz power reporting when just riding along or in a race. So when pushing down on the pedals, your power number will come up a lot faster, and inversely, when you back off the power, it will drop down a lot faster too. In workout mode, when using ERG, it drops back or reverts back to one hertz. You don't need that up and down in ERG. You want things to be nice and smooth. It's also worth noting this is the first time that we've seen virtual shifting supported over Dircon or Direct Connect. This new firmware update for the Wahoo Kicker 6 and Wahoo Kicker Move was released at 3 a.m. local time here. And by the time I was out of bed, I had a number of emails asking, what's it all about? Well, by lunchtime, I had it installed, tested, and can report, it's pretty good. Okay, the first thing I did this morning was load the Wahoo app and update the Kicker Move to version 1.3.14. Release notes there within the app stating that Wahoo Kicker now has virtual shifting enabled with Swift using the Swift Play controllers, also the Swift Click. And also race mode has been added via BLE for Zwift only. From there, click on install update. It will download the firmware and over the next two and a half minutes, which I'll speed up right here, the firmware will be installed. All right, update complete. Clicking on continue to go back and make sure race mode is still enabled. Let's scroll down for that. It's good to go. All right, time to get paired up and riding. For virtual shifting to work within Zwift, you will need to be paired over Bluetooth or Direct Connect to your trainer. There's a few tricks here and there to it, but that's pretty much the easiest way to get everything up and running. Okay, connecting the power source here to the Kicker Move over Dircon. We'll select, yes, Kicker Move, Resistance, Kicker Move, Dircon, Cadence, same deal. And controllers, I have the three controllers, so the left play, the right play, and the click, which will all connect, no problems at all. In the background there, heart rate's already picked up. That's good. We'll just wait for the controllers to configure themselves. And yep, we're good to go. Alrighty, rolling along here, a little further out the road with the Coco Bunch. And the gear indicator is up there in the corner, as you'd expect. Just about to start a sprint here, clicking through the gears, ripping into a short sprint through the bunch and then down through the gears again. Everything's responsive. The resistance is changing nice and fast. And uh, not much else to report, other than I did perform a full Llama lab test too. Just a quick peek at the Llama lab test. Here's the 200 watt steady state, which was nice and smooth. Then it was on to the 250 watt steady state. Short sprint. There's some over and unders, and there's also my new two minute ramp test, which is always a good test to see how my legs are feeling on the day. Let's have a quick review of that data recorded in the Llama Lab today here on my favorite website, the DCR Analyzer tool, where we can compare multiple sources of data as an overlay, see how they stack up. Wahoo Kicker Move 1 up against the Powermax NG Co on the bike, along with my new favorite power meter, the Asioma Pro MX. Everything looking good here, half hour shakedown ride, everything stopped, zero, spun down, all the things. Um, well, this does have auto calibration on the kicker, but I did do a factory spin down just to make sure everything was kosher after that firmware update. Into the steady state, 200 and 250 watt erg. Let's grab that. These are just five minute sections because it really is just the kick and move, which I've done a lot of reporting on previously. 225, 226, 226. Bit of a dip down there in the app plus recording, not, uh, not occurring anywhere else. I'll call that an anomaly, but all looking good for there. Into the sprints. Let me grab that one. Uh, not too bad. The Asioma Pro MX is spiking up a little later on and a little blip there at the end. But overall, the peak powers aren't too far out, which is good to see. This was in the little ring. Now, sprinting with the Kicker Core and the Zwift Hub in the little ring resulted in quite a bit of difference there. This looks to be holding up. 
Into the overs and unders, what do we have here? Um, Data-wise, 206, 210, 211, very close. I could probably get that even closer by drilling them. Yeah, 255, 260, 260. There is an element of smoothing applied in erg mode with the kicker. So you can see the other two power meters on the bike being a little bit more jagged and actually matching each other one for one through here. That looks really nice. One characteristic of the Asioma Pros is they do dip down a little faster, both here and here. Now I will have to do a little bit more testing on that to why they're a little bit more spiky and a little bit more dippy. Could it be the IAV kicking in and not smoothing everything out over one second like the obviously the kick is doing and the Power to Max is doing, but either way, numbers there looking good and the experience on the pedals was just fine. The train it poured on that resistance, it was nice and smooth, dropped off that resistance. You will have that erg drop off as it drops off and then steady states back in. But as I said, the experience on the bike was just fine. Into my new, well, this is a tough test, this one. I don't know why I put this into the uh, Llama Lab test, but it's a good test of erg. It's a good test of accuracy and responsiveness of a trainer, where the trainer will step up from about 120 watts to 650 or 660 watts over a two minute session. 241, 244, 243, you can see things there stepping up, stepping up, stepping up. The power menus on the bike being a little bit more responsive as they're a little bit more unsmoothed. And things get very ugly there at the end where I'm out of the saddle pushing 650 watts for around 15 seconds. But look, overall, things are looking great there. Then just riding along as I sit up and have a drink and check Instagram, 105, 108, 109. That's me being wonky sitting up, just cooling down for about four minutes and uh, that's all looking pretty good. And lastly, just a quick look at the cadence as I've just had a query come through on the kicker core with virtual shifting and the cadence. Cadence here with the kicker move, all reporting pretty well. No phase shift. It's a little ugly back here. Uh, actually, let's dive into the two dips just here and here. Now, how the kickers try and estimate your cadence is with that peak power phase on each pedal stroke. It tries to pick the dips, pick the gap between those and give you a cadence number. It's usually pretty good, except when there's no resistance, so it can't pick that power curve. That's what's happening right there as it's coming off those erg sessions, probably off the sprint there. Let's have a look. Yes, definitely, that's coming off the sprint. And the other one is coming off the over and unders as well, where I'm completely toast. And the other power meters are just averaging that cadence just a little bit smoother across there. So kick and move, unable to pick the power phase, but the others have accelerometers, so that's pretty much the only thing I can pick out there. If you're just riding along, if you're just doing erg, that cadence should be, well, just fine. Alrighty, there we are, the Wahoo Kicker Move put to the test in the Llama Lab with that new virtual shifting update and passing with flying colors. I will be keeping an eye out for the Wahoo Kicker 4 and Wahoo Kicker 5 firmware update, so stay tuned for those sometime in the near future. To be across videos like that and everything else I upload on this channel, hit that subscribe button. Also hit like if you found this video informative and we shall see you soon.